be you. Tonight on Frontline, she went to Hollywood. Just start to bring your jeans down a little bit. You look like a million, Colleen. And ended up in a nightmare. You look fabulous. Colleen Applegate did not like doing sex on film. Terrific. She hated it. A small town girl. Like she just came right off the farm. She looked like peaches and cream. Who killed herself. Tonight on Frontline. Great, take the picture. Death of a Porn Queen. Funding for Frontline is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you. This is Frontline. This is where the story ends. Palm Springs, California. Early in the evening, March 21st, 1984. A young woman lay thrashing on her bed with a bullet wound through her temple. A rifle lay beside her. I went over to her and she was laying, there was like two mattresses pushed together on the bed and there was like a crease and there was a blood going all the way down the crease but you couldn't see any blood on her. And, um, Her condition was uh, hopeless. She was comatose and uh, she was going to die. Hey, Elmer, could I have the uh, gun on the Applegate shooting, please? This is the weapon that was found um, at her side. How do you think she shot herself? Uh, she would have been laying down on the bed with the gun on the bed or propped on her arm, uh, possibly with her thumb or other finger to the gun, and the bullet would have passed through her head and into the wall where we found it. She was known as Shauna Grant, a star of X-rated films. Her real name was Colleen. Colleen Applegate from Farmington, Minnesota. She left home when she was 18. When she died, she was 20. Colleen lived here for a while, an apartment house near Hollywood. In the spring of 1983, a few months before her death, she suddenly moved out. I wonder if she left anything here. Yeah, I have some things that I was to send to her mother, but I never did. You're welcome to them. Pictures and terrible books. It's a lot of pictures. What's this one? She was very pretty. Very pretty. That's a beautiful picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what she looked like? Yeah. Yeah, her hair is long, but a little bit longer than shoulder length, blonde, like strawberry blonde. Very pretty. And these are just. You know, I guess her high school things. Diploma? Yeah. Diploma. Letters, school letters. I guess they're for cheerleading.
High school diploma, old snapshots and valentines, her confirmation certificate from the Catholic Church, and a copy of Hustler magazine with her picture on the cover. These are like the belongings of two people, as though Shauna Grant had kept Colleen Applegate's things, dragged them with her from place to place, and finally left them behind. When did one person become the other? How does an ordinary small-town girl like Colleen become a Hollywood porn queen? And then what happened to her? She shot herself, but why? How did she get so far from home? She was an everyday girl, just like everybody else. She was in cheerleading, I was in cheerleading. Teresa Sickenator was one of Colleen's closest friends from the sixth grade on. She always appeared happier than she was. I remember that she, um, she was so unpredictable. You never really knew what she was thinking. You never knew what she was going to do next unless she shared it with you. Colleen was, she was more private or more inside of herself, I think, than our other kids had been. Colleen Applegate's parents, Phil and Karen, still live in southern Minnesota. Recently, they divorced. I was very strict with Colleen. To me, right's right and wrong's wrong. It still is. But as long as it doesn't go too wrong, they're going to do what they want to do anyway. I maybe tried to run the house, or I tried to run a house like you do a business, and really that isn't a good way to, to run a house sometimes. And uh, maybe I come off that way. But I, you know, I learned over the years too. But I, I think when she was going to high school, when she was in here, I, I expected certain things. I, I realized I was a tough father. I wasn't an easy father, and I don't know whether that was a mistake or not because I was just as tough on the other kids too. She was the oldest of five, but there was nothing strange or abnormal about her childhood. It was a very average childhood. She loved to read. She used to write poems. She wasn't much of a house cleaner, but she loved to cook. Our relationship with Colleen was fine until her junior and senior year. Then we had a lot of arguments. At about that time, she began to date a boy named Mike Marcel, who was two years older. She started liking boys, showing it, and she knew that she could get almost anyone she wanted to. I think that's when she really started liking boys. Is this our graduation year? Colin? Yeah, because um, it's 81. 81. Yeah, okay, this is the year we graduated. And she wrote on the back page, Brenda, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Like Two said, of Colleen's yeah. oldest friends live now in Southern California, Brenda Rosenau and Colleen Hayer. They grew up with her. Both went to California at about the same time she did and stayed in touch with her to the end. No matter how far we are apart, we'll always be close at heart. And we'll always keep it touch, even if one of us ends up in Egypt. But anyway, I think I've used up enough space. Be good, Brenda. Keep smiling and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Love, Lena. a long time since I read that. I think she was a little bit different. You know, she had different ideas, I think, than everybody else. She had these dreams of what she wanted to do, and she wanted to be a model, and back then we didn't really have set dreams or goals, and she did. It was a small town, you know, a population of what was there, 4,800 people at the time or something? Now, yeah, it was even less than it's and small everybody, town. everybody knew what you were doing before you did it, and there was never really anything to do. They bored everybody. Yeah. Colleen stayed in Farmington a while after high school, working first as a cashier, then as an employee of the telephone company. There, one night in December, she swallowed a bottle of pills. She was rushed to the hospital. 
we took her to the emergency and they pumped her stomach. It was basically that it wasn't so much that she wanted to kill herself as it was that she wanted some attention. And she thought that was a way of getting it. Did you and Colleen ever talk about it? No. To be honest, no, I don't think we did. I don't think we really sat down and talked about it. We went to the counselor with her as a family. And then they had one group session and uh, with the whole family. And I was in, all of us were in there, and they tried to get us to talk. And of course, we're all sitting there looking at each other, nobody's saying much. And um, I was very angry because I don't, I still don't feel she took that because of physical, although maybe it was, maybe that was the beginning sign, and I didn't know it. Of a problem, I thought she did it for attention after she took the pills, living in a small town can really be the pit sometimes. A lot of people were talking about it and a lot of people were on her case. She wanted to get out of here. Colleen and her boyfriend, Mike Marcel, headed west. Why do you think she went to California? To be somebody. Los Angeles that first spring was no more fertile ground for Colleen's vague ambitions than Farmington, Minnesota had been. All I know was that I had talked to her a couple of times and they couldn't, neither one of them were having very good luck finding a job. And Mike was getting real upset and he wanted her to find a job because he couldn't get a job. And he found, from what she told me, he's the one that found the ad for modeling. Yeah. It was just in the newspaper. Yeah. It's, uh... Two girls, one guy, simulation. Yeah. There's no colored guys. Hello? Okay, he needs you at 10 a.m. Friday. This now, is the man Colleen went to see in the spring of 1982. Got a pencil? His name is Jim South. And can you write this early in the morning? He runs an agency called World Modeling. What we do is that we're licensed to get you work with professional photographers. The majority of the work that we get is nude photographic modeling. The pay does run from 100 a day up to 1500 a day, depending on who's shooting you. Now, the two different type shootings we have, we have single girl you modeling alone, like you see in Penthouse. We also have simulation, you lucky devil. A documentary crew led by Wendy Apple shot these scenes of South as he interviewed a new model named Kim. You are touching. You do look like you're doing something, but you're not. Jim South is a, indeed an agent. Apple was making a film entitled Fallen Angels. And he is absolutely the medium, the way in which girls who know nothing about Hollywood or movies or pornography come into the porno industry. They have to pass through him. They don't have to. But that's the way his business is set up. Give me a shot of you standing close to the stool with your right foot on the bottom ledge. He said that he can get new girls work uh, very fast. There's always a job for a new girl. Right over there, taking a Polaroid. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, now twist a little bit more around. South showed his Polaroids of Colleen Applegate to penthouse photographer Steve Hicks. Up, down, up, down. Okay, that's fine. I'd like to shoot some more of that, but I want to move that cactus out because it's got no meaning in the picture. I don't equate what I do with x-rated films whatsoever push it one foot to the left and it'll be out i mean uh, what i do is i photograph women and attempt to create beauty out of their bodies stand and let me see you just start to bring your jeans down a little bit just slowly keep going i'll tell you when to stop colleen was was a beautiful girl um and i think very unaware of it you know she was the type of girl that when she walked in she looked in many ways like she just came right off the farm but in makeup she was a very beautiful girl and um, she really took to modeling quickly you know it's unfortunate that mother nature put uh, 
18 year old girls on this planet with beautiful bodies because um, you know the mind of a typical 18 year old girl is is not prepared to make the right decisions in this town with these opportunities hey Stephanie I need you to grab grab those jeans I need you to stretch that's great that's great Hicks advised Colleen to get out of nude modeling quickly because it leads downhill after all the magazines have used her, the only thing left is X-rated movies. I see completely different colors, I can't tell. She ignored the advice and soon was posing for raunchier magazines. And she invited us up, so we went to her house for the weekend. And that's, that's when the we first found time we out. saw the pictures and all that. What sort of pictures were they? Shocking pictures. We didn't expect, we didn't know, you know, when she said modeling and then, and then she finally told us it was nude. Well, you think of maybe like Playboy, you know, and then the, the pictures we saw, though, were like from more hardcore yeah, type pictures. Erotica and what is that other magazine? Velvet, stuff like that. And then she just had the Polaroids, the instant pictures of her and some guys. <laughs> they were pretty, we both, you know, she pulled them out, started showing them to us, and we just looked at each other, you know, she our mouths explain. were like down to our She'd knees. She'd been kind of covering up. She didn't, she didn't come right out and say, well, I was doing this with this guy and I did this with this girl. And you, you could tell she felt bad because she wouldn't tell us the whole story, mm -hmm. you know. And then it, it even went so far as her trying to convince us to do it yeah. with her. Make, you know, so it wouldn't be as bad. Yeah. What would she say to do that? She had an appointment set up with her manager for us to meet her to go in and the whole bit and we we're just she like said, well I don't think so it's easy she said, well, just go talk to him you know see it's good money you know you can just do it like on the weekends come out here and you don't have to take your clothes off if you don't want to and which you know seeing the pictures you knew you would have to take your clothes off how important do you think it was to Colleen that you approve of what she was doing I think it was really very important. very important to her because I think she knew that nobody that was in her life before did approve. You know, you take you take a typical girl that's used to working at McDonald's or in a shoe store making a minimum wage and suddenly she's given the opportunity to get made up and um, be in front of people that tell her she's beautiful and make as much money in a day as she was making in three weeks. And um, they change, they change. And uh, that's, that's sad. Mike Marcel, Colleen's boyfriend, soon left her and returned to Minnesota, where he spread the news that Colleen was involved in pornography. Marcel won't discuss it now. He says he just doesn't care about her. The Applegates heard the stories about their daughter and flew at once to Los Angeles. We knew that she was working through this world model agency. So we went up to the offices up there and saw Jim South and saw what was going on. We asked if Colleen worked for him and he said yes. And then he said, well, she's right in here. And he threw this book at us and he opened it up and there was nude photographs of, of Colleen um, among other girls and I guess you could come in and pick who you wanted to model for you and that's how they and uh, we said how can you let an 18 year old girl involved in this well she's 18 and she's of age and consent and blah 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 they wanted her to come home and they were like ordering her you know giving her no choice which I think was a mistake because she didn't listen to them mm -hmm. in high school why would she listen now did that cause uh, a rift between you? Yes, I didn't hear from her for, it doesn't seem like eternity, but it was probably two months. Didn't hear a word, and I didn't know where to call her. I mean, we left there. And then all the way home, I kept saying, why did we do that? We could have, you know, found out where she was living, found something. I didn't know how to find her. Okay, I'm in 4523 Van Nuys Boulevard. Now, it is a small office building. It's Suite 203. By this time, and Colleen had posed for almost every men's magazine. Could you come in tomorrow? Well, what's convenient for you? Producer Wendy Apple happened to be filming in Jim South's office when Colleen oh, dropped in. That's when I get back from lunch. Okay. Have a good time, and I'll see you tomorrow.
Bye bye. Okay. Well, we're you and I are gonna undress, and we're. Gonna... <laughs> you don't have enough money. Just be nice. Who doesn't have enough money? We don't have enough money. <laughs> we're a modeling. Okay. What's the name of the paper, please? You saw the ad in. Colleen was in South's office again when an adult film director named okay. Bobby Hollander came in, looking for actresses for his next we're film. I wanted to be using new girls who were just making the turnover. I didn't want to use a first timer. And Colleen had done a piece prior to the Paper Dolls, just one. We sat and talked, and uh, she was wearing jeans, no shoes, and a sweatshirt, and sitting on a tabletop. And uh, I just got good vibes from her, and she received good vibes from me. And I said, This is going to be easy. It's all a matter of dollars and cents now. She said, well, I don't know about that. I said, well, what you don't know about, don't be ashamed to ask me. Because I like you. I don't want to take you to bed. Let's be friends. And in, in this business, she felt, wow, there's somebody that doesn't, you know, want to grab me. I've been in this a while. Those days are, are they passed me already. You know, you don't have to sleep with anyone to get in the film. You have to sleep with them on the film. Shana, how old are you? I'll be 20 in a week. I'll be 20 in a week? Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to be 19. No, I am 19. I'll be 20. Uh, and how long have you been a, uh, a paper doll? Paper doll? A uh, model, a cover girl, a centerfold? About two months. Two months? Mm -hmm. Did anybody twist your arm to get into the business? No, not at all. It was all my idea. Really? Uh-huh. What color This is a scene from that first film Colleen did with Bobby Hollander. I can't see. He renamed her Shauna Grant. Oh, yeah. She was not 19, but 18 at the time. Are you still a virgin? No. Are you kidding? <laughs> when, uh, how old were you when you lost your virgin? Almost 17. Almost 17. You almost lost it, or you did lose it when you were <laughs> I almost. did lose it when I was almost 17. I said to her, you have the capability of being a star, an overnight sensation. Because one day, and it's going to happen fast, once they put a little makeup on you, put some high heels on your feet, and stockings in a garter belt, like they do in the picture layouts, the public's going to fall in love with you. Bobby could talk a nun into doing a porno movie. Laurie Smith is a veteran adult film actress and makeup artist. She became Colleen's closest friend. After Colleen died, Laurie gave up acting and moved away from Los Angeles. You know, I always look like such an elegant lady on film and I'm still like a little kid. I'm a little tomboy in my real life and I never changed from the day I came from Huntington Beach. I'm still a little beach bum girl. I love it when you touch me there. When I touch you where, Chuck? When I but on movies, I was a, give me a whip and put some makeup on me, and I, I could say, lick my boot to anybody. Is there anything else you'd like? Laurie transformed you? Colleen. <laughs> when I first met her, she was frumpy, schoolgirlish, wore funny, funny clothes. I thought they were funny clothes. I called them funny clothes. And plain and didn't know about makeup, never really wore makeup and just never just kind of you know like this kind of a person production still here we go we kiss oh you want me to go in a <laughs> let's see a pose uh, then after i was finished with her her shoulders were back and her back was arched and her chin was up and she flip her hair around and <laughs> and she would just she I became sexy she became Shauna Grant. She looked like peaches and cream, nude. Naked peaches and cream. And that was that Minnesota upbringing. This is the farthest I've been away from home, on my own. That's crazy. I haven't been anywhere. She got her little act down, like, you know, a little girl from Minnesota. And, you know, t t up till the very end, she used to say that, like, I wonder how many more years I'm going to get away with this Minnesota act. 
we would tell her, well, you know, if you want to get out, choice, really. you can come stay with us. We'll find you a job. You know, letting her know that that wasn't the only thing that there mm -hmm. was for her. We couldn't tell her what to do. She was happy doing what she was doing. Um, we were her friends. All we could do is back her up. Well, when you invited her to come live with you and to get a good job, what uh, did she say? She always told me, well, what could I do? She goes, I can't do anything. I can't type. I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, she always was not really putting forth the effort. Yeah. Making up excuses. Well, I can't right now. Um, I have this coming up. It pays yeah. real good. You know, and see, that's just it. Nothing that she could do would compare to the money that she yeah. was making. And I think that was a big issue. Before I blast off my mouth and go any further, let me introduce you to one of the stars in the business, Miss Shauna Grant. How are you doing? Thanks for the intro. Bobby told me that, told you that you can write to me, and I would love it if you wrote to me. I'll, I will send you a picture, and I will autograph it. I thought she was adorable. I thought she was cute. And I took a liking to her. I wanted to see it happen where she got what she deserved, where she wasn't abused. Any mind tricks she used to get through those sex scenes? No, we just get high. We just, she, we always got high before we did it. <laughs> oh, there's something else I want to do. Colleen had begun to use cocaine. She returned to Minnesota for a visit in the fall. Her friend Teresa met her at the Twin Cities airport. She got off the plane and she wasn't really Colleen, the Colleen that I knew. She, um, she seemed very uppity, you know, a little jumpy. She was a little anxious. And first thing she wanted to do was um, go into the bathroom and, you know, get a snort of coke. She just, her eyes looked wild. She wore a lot of makeup. And her hair, she always was very fussy about her hair. But she just, it was just brushed. It wasn't really fixed. She just, like she, it just looked hard. She just didn't look herself at all. The subject of uh, drugs, I guess I brought the subject up. I said, I hope you're not involved and, and stay away from all this cocaine and things like that. I said, you really don't need that. And she says, oh, you don't have to worry, Dad. She says, I go to parties where that's at, but I don't, I don't do that. And because I'm a parent, and be, I guess, and because it's my child, I guess I wanted to believe her. I just didn't like what she was doing. She was flaunting her, her um, portfolio or whatever. And the pictures she showed me in the portfolio weren't nude pictures, but they were very flattering pictures, but she hardly had anything on. And she wanted to give me one. She wanted me to pick one out and she'd, ha you know, give it to me. I told her I didn't want any of those pictures. Magazines with Colleen's nude pictures had reached the stores in Farmington. In the high school, Colleen's younger sister found one of those pictures taped to her locker. Colleen had become not a celebrity, but an embarrassment. She went back to go to a friend's wedding that was one of the girls that hung around with us. and. She was kind of worried, and the things they were saying, and the girl's mother wouldn't even let her in. She wouldn't let her in the church. They didn't want her around. Three P. <laughs> Despite appearances, this is serious business. The Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Twice a year, these exhibitions give the porn industry a chance to show off its new films and its stars to the nation's videotape dealers. Triple X kisses. For your office wall? Sure. What are the clients going to say? Great. Thank you much. Uh, Hiya. Hello. How are you doing? Americans rented 100 million X rated video cassettes last year. Most of the companies that produce them are represented here. They have a pool of 400 actors and actresses who are willing to have sex on camera. 
And the winner is Blame It On Jim. The X-rated performers have their own version of the Academy Awards. Jeanette Little Dove is another newcomer to adult movies. She's 19 from Oklahoma. It just messes with your mind. <laughs> it's addictive. You can't quit once you get a hold of the many and you know it's there and it's easy to get to. You don't want to quit. Just push that okay. automatically. Okay. Joey. Okay. Joey. Oh, Jerry. Let me get oh, here. Get this picture. In 1983, Colleen Applegate attended one of these shows as the porn industry's new star. She had been unwelcome at a friend's wedding in her hometown. But here, people lined up to have their picture taken with her. She had a line of a minimum of 40 people at a time. She saw the recognition. And she liked it? Yeah. That's, she became Shauna Grant. At that show? Yeah. She became Shauna Grant. But Shauna Grant always was Colleen Applegate. I don't know which scared her more. She was a little girl. She needed to be supported, you know, Need to, needed to be told that everything was okay and that, you know, there were people there with her. Yeah, I'm sure you oh, know. we got both of them in here. Lucky me. I don't even like it, the real thing. Danielle Martin and Colleen began their X-rated acting careers at about the same time. Okie dokie, you might. Something dirty. We met on a, on a film, Summer Camp Girls. She was like really nice and we just like started hanging out, you know? Best friends, you know? Very close. Okay, John, you're next, son. Huh? You know, I will always make it on my own. And I know that, even if everyone dumps me. But she couldn't, you know? She was holding on. She was frightened to make her own decisions or what to do or anything like that. Is your sound okay in there now? Can you have the slate? Okay, fine. Slating centerfold celebrities, uh, Shauna and Jamie, take one. Why would you want me to lay down? Well, just so you could be comfortable. You know, I don't want you to stray in. Bobby Hollander directed Colleen in a series of hardcore tapes that required only a day or two each to shoot. Oh, yeah? You're going to go aside? Bobby is an okay person to work for. He's not a pushy, mean, doesn't make you feel... I mean, you may look cheap in the movie, but while you're doing it, it makes you feel like a little queen, you know? During the time, you feel like you're doing Gone with the Wind. So it's like one of those things. It's not hard for Bobby. He didn't talk her into it. She wanted to do it. Shana was a talent. She was a star. There are stars in the business. Shana Grant made herself a star in a short period of time. The quickest I've ever seen. Colleen's movies and modeling paid her almost $100,000 in one year. She spent most of the money on cocaine. If she needed it like you feel like you need it. You know, it's a security blanket. I mean, we just like to do it. We did a lot, though. She and I, I mean, in there, that one year, in a year and a half, actually, that I really hung around with her a lot. We, because we'd always go in on it together and we always would buy a lot. I may have done cocaine with both of them, uh, but on selling either one, I wasn't selling cocaine. I was a user. Did you give Colleen cocaine? I think I gave Colleen as much cocaine as she gave me. It was the perfect thing to have. You could go smoke a joint, unwind from the first scene, and then. Right before you go on, you take a two. <laughs> so now, Shauna is going to... These are explain. outtakes from a movie Lori and Colleen Everything. did with Bobby Hollander. Oh, oh. She's going to dust off the fucking screen. Okay. So you don't miss anything. <sighs> All right, don't get mad at me. I just see, every time I go, I, I mean, ooh. I'm talking to you. you Once I saw Bobby start a freebasing, that... Was the last time I worked for Bobby, and it's the last time I would ever work for him, and I was really up to pissed off. Would you watch? You know, you don't know. No, you ain't listening to shit. We are listening to everything. You walk away. I know exactly. I'm listening. I don't want you to say anything. I want you to listen to me. Okay, Bobby. Lori, deep inhale. 
I know, but let's get to this. Doesn't that's okay? Do you see what I think? You're saying this, you can read I it know right exactly from the how you want it. I he know. just was crazy. He couldn't make up his mind what he wanted to do. He had this script that he'd written probably when he was on his third day of wake, but it was so sadistically disgusting. We're taking this instead of the stills that we did. And I just said, Colleen, forget it. Just forget, Bobby. Go off on your own. You got your name now. You're big enough where you can do it on your own. No, no, no. I told you. I am. Yes, we are shooting. We are shooting. We are rolling. We are rolling. Debbie's in here getting makeup on now. Bobby Hollander is on probation for cocaine possession. Each weekend, he must clean up highways for the California Transportation Department. I've been here 16 or 17 days working with this crew. Some of the finest guys in the, in the, uh, in the highway and freeway business. Colleen was making as much as $1,700 a day when sex scenes were shot. Mm. She hated it. She hated it. She just laid there and just let it happen. Colleen Applegate did not like doing sex on film, period. And she just was so overwhelming because I knew the girl did not want to be there. It was just so, it was so shame, it, you know, it's so shameful. A lot Jerry of Butler, one of Colleen's co-stars, believed she did not belong in adult films but others kept encouraging her. Everybody said it was okay. Hey, put this skirt on. You look like a million, Colleen. Oh, you look great. I mean, uh, Shawnee, you look fabulous. Oh, great. Take the picture. Oh, terrific. Oh, this is great. Oh, great sex scene. Oh, terrific. These are the people that are still alive. These are the people that made money and still making money off this poor little girl, getting to think that that's all she needed in life. She enjoyed the recognition. She enjoyed the money. There's no question about that. Okay, but she was an aimless girl. She was vulnerable. Don't you think that that, that life is harmful to a person like that? And that's a loaded question. Yeah, it is. It's a loaded question. I think anyone who is in Colleen's age group, they're all in the same situation. Okay. They ch she chose. She chose to do it. She could have stopped. I made less money in just being a, you know, a uh, photographer's model. But I personally think she enjoyed doing it. Uh, Colleen was an exhibitionist. Okay, maybe she Colleen was two different people on camera and off camera. Two different people, Jekyll and Hyde, completely. It was her choice, but wouldn't it have been better or to stop. Well, talking about it today, yes, it would have been better. Yeah, can you tell somebody to bring my bathroom in here? I've got to bring it in. Okay, well, I'll look at In that one year, Colleen performed in 30 X-rated movies. She had an abortion. She contracted herpes. She performed sex on camera with 37 men. Sit <laughs> The thing I notice mostly about is the, the how quiet it is here now. There used to be noise. There used to be life here. Jake Ehrlich is a former cocaine dealer. He returned to his home in Palm Springs, California this winter after almost three years in prison. It was just an empty feeling, you know, as if I left, you know, last week and coming back to absolutely zero. Basically how our bedroom was set up. We just keep the stereo over there. And uh, there's a patch there that bothers me. That's uh, the patch the police pulled out. They made a patch and someone tried to patch it up and it bothers me to sleep next to it. What do you mean? That's what the, bu the bullet went through the bullet went through her head. She I don't know how she was lying, which how she was even shot, see I never even knew. But the bullet went through her head and into the wall. Some of her clothing is still here, not much, but this, I find a piece here and a piece there. Jake met Colleen in the spring of 1983 after he saw pictures of her in Penthouse magazine. I opened it up and I saw the section she was in. I said, this girl is gorgeous. This girl is for me. Bobby Holland is her agent and he'll come around. He learned that Colleen's manager was Bobby Hollander, 
one of his cocaine customers. And uh, he brought her over, and this little girl with, like, this washed hair, you know, curling up, and a little Gumby T-shirt, and a pair of jeans. And I says, no, this couldn't be the girl. This girl looks 14, 15, 16 years old. But it was her. You know, not what I expected. Not the fantasy. It wasn't the fantasy from the magazine. She came here, and she never left. She just stayed. She stayed. She found home. And she quit doing pornography. She just stopped dead. She was very happy in the very beginning. Very exuberant, happy person. She'd call up everyone. I'm in love. I love Jake. You know, I, people would tell me, Jake, this girl really loves you. And uh, she started building up. Uh, she would call home for recipes to her parents. I'm not in the business no more, and give me the recipe for that. I'm cooking for Jake. Sometimes late at night, with the stereo on, Colleen tape-recorded her thoughts. You amaze me, Jake. Here I am, 20 years old, and in love with a man twice my age. You let me be Colleen and you don't expect me to be anybody else. You respect me. And you care about me. And you at least like me. <laughs> she was basically happy living here. She was safe from the outside world. Colleen stopped making adult films but the people she'd met in that business often came to visit her at Jake's. There was always drugs around. It was like a non-stop party. Her friend Not Teresa first, came from Minnesota to see her once. Had people coming over. I, well, I remember a bad experience at one of these parties that I was offered something I thought was a joint, and it was something called Jerry Lewis's Kids. It made you feel retarded. And that was the point that I decided I shouldn't be there. <laughs> it scared the heck out of me. I believe Colleen was dependent on Jake for her habit, her drug habit, and because she had a beautiful house. Um, she was very dependent on people. We just started drifting a little bit apart. You know, I, c I couldn't supply her with the amount of attention she needed. She couldn't be, she couldn't, she would follow me from one room to another. It's just something I couldn't take, you know. I just couldn't take it, so I just constantly push her off. Jake didn't know it, but Colleen had become involved with a college student during a trip back to Minnesota. He doesn't want to be I mean, identified. She just seemed like someone who had made a mistake, and she, I mean, she didn't want to be doing it anymore, according to her, and I mean, she was friendly and intelligent and pretty and fun to be with. We had a great time. Now she told me that she was going to marry him and I don't know if he if they'd actually talked about that but in her heart that was her dream to marry him to come back go to school be a regular college student use her mind because she had a good mind and marry him and yet Colleen stayed with Jake and her cocaine addiction worsened it's hard for a cocaine dealer to control someone that's close to you especially if you're selling it how can you say you shouldn't do it. It's no good for you. Meanwhile, I'm doing it myself, and I'm selling it. She got real thin. She was real pale. She w wasn't eating. She just looked sick, mm -hmm. you know. And I, and I would always ask her. I would say, why, why, are you, why do you keep doing it? Why don't you just stop for a while, you know? And she's like, oh, I'm okay. I don't, I don't do it that much, yeah. you know. And I say, well, look at you. You're, you know, you're 90 pounds. Jake urged her to get psychiatric help. She refused. And one night, he told her she'd have to move out. She said, if that's the end, I'll show you. She runs in my bedroom, and I hear her pick up my rifle and go click, click, and I run in there real fast. I didn't take her serious. I figured she just wants attention. She wants something. I ran in there quick enough that she had the rifle cocked. And she hadn't pulled the trigger? No, no. She, she cocked the rifle? She cocked it. And it was loaded? It was loaded. I kept a rifle. It's a 22 rifle, the same rifle she took a life with. 
but I didn't take her serious. You know, I think she just wants attention. She's mad, and, you know, and I couldn't handle the situation either. And I, you know, we sat down in the bed, we talked, and I says, "All right, you don't have to move. You stay here, and when you're ready, you'll move." You know, I was scared. A few days later, in February 1984, police arrested Jake for drug dealing. He was taken to jail and faced several years in prison. The Adult Film Association of America proudly presents the 8th Annual Erotic Film Awards. Adult movies have come of age. Colleen had not made a hardcore film in the 10 months she lived in Palm Springs. But three of her earlier performances were nominated for awards. Shauna Grant for Flesh and Laces Parts 1 and 2. Are you worth that? Of course I'm worth that. You ask for a top model, you're going to get it. Mr. John Leslie and Ms. Shauna Grant. <laughs> She didn't win, but it must have been an exciting evening for Colleen. Francis Ford Coppola was seated at the same table. Best part and sex decoration are Eddie Heath for The Devil and Miss Jones, Part Two. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have trouble with this for a while to see it. Colleen found she was still very much in demand. <laughs> that night, she agreed to make another adult film and was to begin shooting it in eight days. It was seven days before her death. A few days after the awards show, Colleen's Minnesota boyfriend arrived in Los Angeles to see her. She never showed up at the airport. Oh, there's a mix-up the fact that Colleen just totally disregarded the fact he was flying in, forgot. <laughs> she forgot he, he was coming in. She made plans for like two months to have him come out to, from Minnesota. And he finally got the time to come out, and she knew about it for two weeks. She knew, but then when it came down to that day, we'd gone to the awards and we got wasted. And, and then we were hanging out at my house. We slept for two days. And we didn't know how we were going to get there because we didn't have a car. So we had to figure out a way to get there. And that's when, that's what she was doing all that day, is figuring out a way to get there. And that's when Jake called and all the... Shit came down. Jake phoned Colleen from jail, told her their relationship was over. She would have to move out. I got the seed plant that my boyfriend's coming in town. Um, she didn't pay none of the bills. She sort of destroyed the two thousand dollars and mostly drugs and limousines and partying. Um, all these things are built in my head, and I'm saying, "Hey, man, stop her now." Colleen called her friend Brenda and asked her to come over and keep her company while she packed. And she was like real depressed and she wasn't talking much. She was just kind of sitting around. She wasn't, you know, you could tell she wasn't happy at all. She had run out of money and cocaine. In two days, she'd be performing sex on camera again. Now she had to pack and get out. And the stereo was on and uh, she went back into her bedroom I remember the first time I really, really was lonely and depressed and down, and I, and I wasn't doing so hot. I was stuck and had no one to depend on but me. That was the first time I really felt bad. And that was minute compared to what's coming and what's happened since then. And I heard a pop, like a loud pop. And I look, and she was laying, there was like two mattresses pushed together on the bed, and there was like a crease, and there was a blood going all the way down the crease, but you couldn't see any blood on her. So I like tilted her head up, and I was just trying to see, you know, I was just trying to look at her, and I was like, Colleen, Colleen, because she was still breathing. A girl named Lori called here at midnight, our time, and was crying on the phone and asked if we knew about Colleen, and we didn't. And then she said that, that um, she was in L.A., but Brenda had called her and told her that Colleen shot herself. 
and um, she just was wondering if I knew, and I didn't hear from anybody. At the hospital, machines kept Colleen alive for 24 hours. Her mother and friends were there. And I had had this ring that was um, a little heart with some diamonds on it. I, I wore it on my wedding finger, and I uh, asked um, Colleen's mom if I could give it to her. And she's like, are you sure? Uh, you know, I, I gave it to her. You know, I was afraid to even touch her. I was like reaching on I asked, you know, can I? Can I touch her? You know, she just looks so frail and everything. And it just was so different to see someone with a bullet through their head. <laughs> you can imagine. And uh, so I took it up my wedding finger and it wouldn't even fit on hers. Was, her body was being kept alive by machines and circulation when it goes. You know, body swells up and I just knew that she wasn't there it wasn't her it wasn't Colleen her eyes were donated I had got two different letters about her eyes and um, her kidneys were supposed to be but I never heard from them so I don't know if it worked or didn't work I never heard back if but that's what I signed for them to take Colleen Applegate went to California in March 1982. She died there in March 1984. She went in search of something, not knowing what, and with only her beauty to offer in return. And she got lost. She left home incomplete, unequipped for the adventure she'd have, lacking an inner compass. Like Dorothy from Kansas, Colleen found herself in a dangerous forest, but there was no scarecrow along to help her find the way out. Maybe adults learn too much. Maybe we should all go back to being kids. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be a kid and keep the honesty? Be totally ignorant to hate and loneliness and disgust. Dear Frontline, I'm so... ...to Hollywood like thousands of young women in search of stardom. She found her way to adult films, but two years later, she was dead. Next month marks the 15th anniversary of her death but her mother still wonders how and why she died. A shattered Hollywood dream is our Entertainment Tonight cover story. I wasn't aware of how bad her life was till after she had already died. I want an answer to what happened on the night Colleen died. 15 years after the tragic death of adult film star Shauna Grant, her mother is still looking for the truth. I remember feeling good and bad and a story goes with it. Shauna made this recording shortly before her death, no doubt thinking about the story that begins in a small Midwestern town. Colleen Applegate was the girl next door who dreamed of a career in modeling. So at age 18, she left her family behind and headed for Hollywood. You and I are gonna undress and we're gonna... <laughs> Success came quickly, but only in the X-rated world. Porn producer Bobby Hollander discovered Colleen in 1982 and rechristened her Shauna Grant. Everybody wanted to work with Shauna because she was fresh, she was, she was lovable. Over the next year, Colleen made 30 adult films and earned more than $100,000. Tragically, she spent most of it on a growing addiction to cocaine. All they're doing is using these young girls and then pretty soon the girls are so strung out that they'll do anything to supply their habit. Her mother claims drugs forced Colleen into the pornographic world, but those who worked with her insist she enjoyed life as Shauna Grant. Did anybody twist your arm to get into the bed? No, not at all. It was all my idea. But Colleen's lifestyle came with a price. Her romance with a drug dealer named Jake Ehrlich was coming to an end. 
So police believe a desperate Colleen locked herself in a bedroom in his home and killed herself. Her mother still remembers a frantic midnight call to the emergency room. The lady that answered the phone in the ER said, well, what do you expect when a bullet goes in one side of your head and comes out the other? Her mother suspects Ehrlich orchestrated Colleen's death to prevent her from revealing his drug connections. Colleen's fingerprints weren't even on the gun. But just yesterday, the Palm Springs police told E.T., quote, we are confident that it was a suicide, not a homicide. She was a troubled young woman with a drug habit that included cocaine. She was a good kid, and I'm sorry that happened. You only feel this good once. Don't waste it. About the allegation that he arranged Colleen's murder, her boyfriend Jake Ehrlich told us, quote, I was in jail at the time of her suicide. We'll be right back.